got some exam questions here on the Year 12 ACIDS topic. So if you wanted to test yourself on these, the link to the PDF with the questions on is in the description for the video. So we'll just download them and then play on for the answers. Okay, so the first part of the question one, student reacts a sample of zinc carbonate. The important thing here is with an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid. What would the student see? Well, it would be two things that see bubbles of carbon dioxide and the fact that there's excess acid means all of that zinc carbonate will dissolve. Second part of the question, the equation for the reaction, it doesn't mention at one state symbol, so I'm not going to bother. So ZnCO3 plus 2 moles of HCl gives ZnCl2 plus H2O plus CO2. Question two, so suggest the formula of the ions present in this salt. Well, a salt's got to either contain a metal ion or an ammonium ion. Well, there's no metal ion in this, so it's going to be the ammonium ion, NH4+. So the remaining atoms gives us the nitrate ion. Suggest the formula of the acid used to prepare calcium phosphate. Well, the acid itself would be phosphoric acid. The formula of phosphoric acid is H3PO4. And the second part, the name of the base that could have been used, well, we could have calcium oxide, calcium hydroxide, or calcium carbonate. Question three now. So the formulae of the two main ions present in the solution of aluminium sulfate obviously going to be the aluminium ions, that's Al3+, plus, and the sulphate ion, SO4, 2 minus. We've got to write an equation now for the reaction between the aluminium oxide with sulfuric acid, and we're told that it's solid aluminium oxide, so just be careful when you come to your state symbols. So it's Al2O3, solid, plus sulfuric acid, H2SO4, Acids are aqueous. We're going to make the aqueous salt aluminium sulfate, so Al2SO4, three times Aq, and water, H2O, liquid. And to balance that, we need a three in front of the sulfuric acid and a three in front of the water. Next part, what does that dot XH2O represent in the formula? It's the water of crystallization. And the final part, we've got to work out the value of X in this hydrated salt. So you can see I've split it up into its two parts. We've got the anhydrous part here and the water of crystallization here. So basically we want to know the mole ratio in the formula of the anhydrous part to the water. So it's like an empirical formula type calculation. The anhydrous part, we're told, has a mass of 6.846 grams. And therefore, the amount of water that's in this is going to be that 12.606 minus that 6.846. That comes out at 5.76 grams. We then divide by the MR of each part. So it's 342.3 for the aluminium sulfate part, 18 for the water. That gives us 0 0.02 moles of the anhydrous and 0.32 moles of water. So when you divide by the smallest, you get a one to 16 ratio. So X has a value of 16. Question four now, what does the term anhydrous mean? It means there's no water of crystallization present. The relative formula mass of this hydrated salt, so all we do is two sodiums, two sulfurs, three oxygens, and then to that we're going to add the mass of five waters. So that comes out at 248.2. And the calculation now, so we've got 12.41 grams of the hydrated sodium thiosulfate. It's been heated to remove all the water, so the equation looks like that would have written up there. So we've got to work out the expected mass of anhydrous sodium thiosulfate that forms, how much of this we're going to get. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the moles of the hydrated salt. So that's mass over MR, 12.41 grams, divided by the MR, which we worked out in the previous part, 248.2, and that comes out at 0 0.05 moles. So we would expect to get 0 0.05 moles of the anhydrous salt. So all we need to do now is multiply that by the MR and we'll get the mass. So that comes out at 7.91 grams. So question five, the first thing I've got to do is work out the moles of HCl used. Well, the concentration was 0.5, the volume was 32 cm cubed. So moles equals concentration times volume. That's 0 0.5 times 32 centimeters cubed in decimeters cubed, 0 0.032. That comes out at 1.60 times 10 to the minus two. Second part now, how many moles of magnesium hydroxide must be present in the tablet? So we've got a 2 to 1 ratio, so it's going to be half as many, so that's 8.00 times 10 to the minus 3. So the percentage by mass of magnesium hydroxide in the tablet, so what we need to do is work out how many grams of magnesium hydroxide are in the tablet, and then compare that to the mass of the tablet, which was 500 milligrams, and then express that as a percentage. So the first thing we'll do is work out the mass of MgOH twice in the tablet. So that's moles times MR. So that's the 8 times 10 to the minus 3 times the MR of magnesium hydroxide is 58.3. That comes out at 0 0.4664 grams. So the tablet has a mass of 500 milligrams, which is 0 0.5 grams. So the percentage of MgOH twice is going to be 0 0.4664 divided by 0 0.5 times 100, and that comes out at 93.3%. And the final question, we've got to calculate the mass in grams of the aluminium sulphate formed in the solution. We've got to give our answer to three significant figures. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the moles of the acid, because we've got the concentration and volume. So moles of H2SO4, concentration times volume, 3 times 10 to the minus 2 times 0 0.035. Remember the volume's got to be in decimeters cubed. 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3. The moles of aluminium sulphate that's going to form will be a third of that from the mole ratio. So moles of Al2SO4 three times is 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 3. That's 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So the mass of aluminium sulphate is moles times MR now. So it'll be 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles times the MR of aluminium sulfate is 342.3. .3. And that comes out a calculated value of 0 0.119805. So to three significant figures, that's 0 0.120.